The purpose of airport runway, taxiway, and ramp markings, signs, and lights is simple. To provide a standardized and simplified surface navigation system to affect safe ground movement operations, with the goal being to reduce runway incursions. Markings, signs, and lights provide three critical clues for safe ground movement. Your destination, your route, and any movement restrictions you will encounter. There are markings and signs to indicate ground travel lanes, aircraft movement and non-movement areas, runway and taxiway identifiers, traffic control signs, and safe area indicators. There are two general zones at tower-controlled airports within which aircraft and ground vehicles will be located at any given time. Movement areas and non-movement areas. Movement areas include all runways, most taxiways, and taxi lanes at some airports. You are never allowed to enter these areas or move within these areas without air traffic control clearance. Non-movement areas, such as ramps, hangars, ground vehicle lanes, and taxi lanes at some airports are not controlled by air traffic control. Taxi lanes are like secondary streets. They provide a path for aircraft from a ramp to a taxiway. Taxi lanes may be considered movement or non-movement areas, depending on their configuration at individual airports. Some airports taxi lanes are controlled by ramp towers. Since each airport's configuration may be unique, it is critical you know where your non-movement area boundary marking is located. Study your airport's diagram. The boundary between a movement and non-movement area is defined by a yellow dashed and solid striped line. Aircraft and vehicles that are inside the dashed yellow stripe may not proceed without air traffic control clearance. Aircraft and vehicles that are inside the yellow solid line do not need air traffic control clearance to move, but should only do so when conditions are safe. You cannot move from a solid line or non-movement area across a dashed line or movement area without air traffic control clearance. No one except air traffic control can give you clearance into or within a movement area. If you are unsure or do not understand instructions, stop and ask for clarification. It's important for you to be familiar with the layout of your airport. Study and review your particular airport's diagram and keep current on any updates and construction activity. This section addresses the markings you will encounter in a non-movement area. Non-movement areas at tower-controlled airports include hangar areas, ground vehicle traffic lanes, and ramps. Taxi lanes may be considered movement or non-movement areas depending on their configuration at individual airports. We will identify the major markings within the ramp area. The outer perimeter safety envelope represents the safe boundary surrounding an aircraft when it resides at the ramp. This marking is usually represented by a white line outlined in black, but sometimes it can be red with a yellow outline and may vary by airport. During any aircraft movement into or out of the ramp, all equipment, including tugs, tow bars, chocks, etc., should be outside this area. Nothing should be moved into this area until all aircraft engines have been shut down. Also, the driver of any service vehicle brought into this area needs to be extremely careful and cognizant of clearance hazards. The lead-in line is the line that the aircraft follows to the gate. This line is yellow with a black outline. The ground marshal will direct the aircraft so that its nose wheels straddle the center of this line. When towing an aircraft out of the ramp, the tug operator should also use this line as a general guide. The stop mark is the line on which the nose wheels should stop. The marshal will signal this to the pilot. This line may be along different areas of the lead-in line, depending on the type of aircraft allowed at the gate. There may be multiple lines, and there may be aircraft type indicators next to the appropriate line. Aircraft engine ingestion zones are indicated by red slashed half circles, which represent the front of the engine's intakes or propellers. This is an extremely dangerous area when the aircraft engines are running. Extreme caution and awareness are necessary when an aircraft engine is running, even at idle. The consequences of entering this area can be deadly. 
This section addresses markings, signs, and lights found in movement areas, which include runways and taxiways. As a tug operator, there may be the need to move aircraft onto or across runways and taxiways. These are considered movement areas, and air traffic control clearance is required. There are three types of navigational and movement control indicators. Markings on the pavement, signs posted next to runways and taxiways, and lights on runways and taxiways. Certain signs may also be painted on taxiways and runway surfaces. All runway markings will be white. Runways are designated by numbers, and at some airports are followed by the letters L, C, and R, meaning left, center, and right. It's critical to recognize that a numbered runway designation followed by a letter indicates the presence of multiple parallel runways. Therefore, you may be crossing more than one runway and will have to hold at each runway hold position. You will not receive air traffic control instructions to cross all runways at once. Runway markings include runway threshold, designation, touchdown zone, aiming point, center line, runway edges, and distance markings. With the exception of runway designation markings, most likely you will not encounter the majority of these markings as they are intended to help pilots land their aircraft. All taxiway markings will be yellow and may be outlined in black to increase visibility. Taxiways are designated by letters followed by numbers in some instances. The center line, or the line of alignment you use to keep the aircraft in the center of the taxiway, has a solid yellow stripe. The nose gear should travel along the center of this line. An enhanced taxiway center line warns you of an upcoming hold position. Air traffic control clearance is required to cross the hold position. Taxiway edge markings have a single or double yellow stripe. Aircraft should not cross outside these markings. Taxiways can also have shoulder markings. These paved areas are used to prevent jet blast and water erosion from damaging the pavement. Shoulders are not full strength pavement and they are not intended to support the full weight of an aircraft. So it is critical that you do not let the aircraft cross the edge markings into the shoulder area. A closed runway and taxiway marking is located at the ends of closed runways and taxiways. Movement beyond this marking is strictly prohibited. A raised lighted sign may also be used. Runway holding position markings are generally found at the intersection of a taxiway and a runway, but may vary depending on specific airport layouts, such as those with closely spaced runway ends, where you will be instructed to hold short in an unusual location. These markings are used to indicate that you are about to enter an active runway. These markings will also be located with runway hold position signs. The dashed lines will be on the side toward the runway, and the solid lines will be on the side toward the taxiway. The solid lines indicate that you are to stop and hold at this marking, not crossing until you receive clearance from air traffic control. Never assume you have clearance. Always wait for air traffic control instructions. The ILS critical area holding position marking indicates the boundary of the ILS critical area, or instrument landing system. If the ILS is in use due to weather or other conditions, do not cross this marking without air traffic control clearance. Taxiing beyond this point may interfere with the ILS signal to approaching aircraft. If the ILS is in use, you will receive a hold short instruction from air traffic control. For example, Cut one, hold short of runway 16 left, ILS critical area. You will hold at this position until air traffic control gives you instructions to proceed. All airports should have a standardized guidance sign system designed for the safe and efficient movement of aircraft and ground vehicles. The purpose of the sign system is to provide easy determination of designations or names of any pavement area on which aircraft may be located, easy identification of routes to be navigated toward a desired or instructed destination, indication of mandatory holding positions, including those used to maintain aircraft separation during low visibility weather operations, and identification of boundaries for approach areas and ILS critical areas. 
While airports will adhere to these FAA guidelines for sign standardization, your airport sign system may deviate from this plan. It's imperative that you become familiar with your particular airport's diagram to ensure safe, efficient, and repeatable aircraft and vehicle movement. For visual clarity at night and during inclement weather, signs may be illuminated internally or externally. There are eight main categories of sign types. Mandatory instruction signs, location signs, boundary signs, direction signs, destination signs, information signs, roadway signs, and runway distance remaining signs. We'll examine the signs in each category you'll need to know. Mandatory instruction signs are used to denote taxiway to runway intersections, runway to runway intersections, ILS critical areas, runway approach areas, CAT 2, CAT 3 operation areas, military landing zones, and no entry areas. These signs have white inscriptions on a red background, outlined in black. At all airports, vehicles and aircraft are required to hold at these signs until clearance is given by air traffic control. It is critical that you do not proceed past these signs without clearance from air traffic control. The runway holding position sign is located next to the holding position markings on taxiways or runway intersections and is used to indicate the runway designations. The runway numbers are separated by a dash and their arrangement indicates the direction of the corresponding runway threshold. This example shows that the threshold for runway 34 right is to the left and the threshold for runway 16 left is to the right. If you approach this sign, stop and do not move beyond this sign until air traffic control clearance is granted. The ILS critical area holding position sign, along with the ILS holding position marker, is used for ILS critical areas. It indicates that aircraft and vehicles will hold at this sign until clearance is given by air traffic control when the ILS is in use. Taxiing beyond this point may interfere with the ILS signal to approaching aircraft. The runway approach area holding position sign will be located on the taxiway next to yellow holding position markers. Its purpose is to hold an aircraft on a taxiway short of a runway approach or departure area so the aircraft does not interfere with runway operations such as penetrating the airspace required for the approach or departure runway or crossing through the runway safety area. You may not move beyond this sign until you are cleared by air traffic control. The CAT 2, CAT 3 holding position sign is used on a taxiway that is parallel to a runway used during CAT 2, CAT 3 operations to ensure proper aircraft separation. The no entry sign will be located at the entry point of areas that are prohibited to aircraft. These areas may be ground vehicle roadways, one-way taxiways, fire stations, or other non-movement areas. Location signs are used to identify the taxiway or runway upon which the aircraft is located. These signs incorporate yellow inscriptions on black backgrounds with yellow borders. The taxiway location sign indicates the designation of the taxiway on which you are located. These lettered signs will be located along the sides of taxiways. The runway location sign indicates the designation of a runway and is installed on runways where the proximity of two runways could create confusion. These numbered signs are installed next to a runway. Boundary signs are used to identify the boundary of the runway safety area and the ILS critical area. These signs are visible when exiting these areas and are posted on the reverse side of mandatory hold position signs. The runway boundary sign faces the runway and is visible upon exiting the runway. It is located next to the yellow holding position marker. It provides a visual cue that the aircraft is clear of the runway when exiting the runway. The ILS critical area boundary sign is located next to the ILS holding position marking, is visible upon exiting a runway and is used to determine when the aircraft is clear of the ILS critical area. 
Directional signs are used to indicate directions of other taxiways leading out of an intersection. These signs incorporate black inscriptions on yellow backgrounds and always contain arrows. Taxiway direction signs indicate the direction of intersecting taxiways. In this example, taxiway Charlie is to the left and right, and Alpha, the taxiway on which you are currently located, continues ahead and to the left. Runway exit signs are used on runways to indicate exits from the runway to the identified taxiway. The taxiway ending marker sign indicates that the taxiway does not continue beyond the intersection. This sign will be located on the far side of the intersection. Destination signs are used to indicate the general direction to a remote location. Outbound destination signs are used to identify directions to the departure runway. More than one runway, separated by a dot, may be indicated. Inbound destination signs are used to indicate the route to major destination areas. Common names and abbreviations used for inbound destinations are displayed here. The destination sign contains directional information related to runways, taxiways, ramps, terminals, or other areas. The destination sign will always have an arrow indicating the direction of the taxi route to that destination. In this example, the FBO is straight ahead, while runways 27 and 33 are to the right. Information signs are installed on the air side of an airport, but are not mandatory signs, guidance signs, or runway distance remaining signs. These types of signs include noise abatement procedures, crossing vehicle roadways, or other specialized information. These signs have black inscriptions on yellow backgrounds. Roadway signs consist of standard highway stop signs on vehicle roadways. They're located at each intersection of a roadway with a runway or a taxiway. Appropriate ILS hold signs should be installed on perimeter or access roads where a vehicle could enter an ILS critical area. At controlled airports, signs should also instruct drivers that they cannot proceed without air traffic control clearance. Runway distance remaining signs are installed along the sides of runways and indicate the distance of runway remaining in thousands of feet. In this example, 5,000 feet remain on the landing runway. Airport lighting is provided to enhance visibility at night and during inclement weather, and also provides improved visual guidance for the movement of aircraft and ground vehicles. Lights may be mounted on surface structures, above ground, and in pavement. On runways, centerline lights will be white with the exception of the final 3,000 feet. At 3,000 feet, red and white lights alternate until the final 1,000 feet of runway in which continuous red lights are used. Threshold lights are located on each end of the runway. Green is used on the approach side and red is used on the departure side. Runway edge lights are white but will change to yellow for the last 2,000 feet. Flashing yellow runway guard lights are used to indicate the presence of an active runway ahead and are located on either side of the holding position marking. In pavement lights may also be used. Taxiway centerline lights are green. Taxiway edge lights are blue and outline the edges of taxiways. Obstruction lights are usually red or white and are mounted on surface structures or terrain that may pose a clearance or obstruction hazard to moving aircraft. This concludes the section on markings, signs, and lights.